And another example, uh, which is a, a quite famous example, is Airbnb. And it may be that you don't know about this, but during the 2008 economic downturn, the founders of Airbnb sold themed cereal boxes. Yes, you heard it right. They sold themed cereal boxes to keep their business afloat. They didn't give up on their idea, despite the challenges that they had. And today, as I think most people know, Airbnb is a multi-billion dollar company. Now, the question I'd ask is, how easy would it have been to throw your hands up in the air and fold like hundreds of businesses do every day? Welcome to the Hands-On Business Podcast. Where else are you going to come to get tips, tricks, and advice on growing your business? Now, as you know, what people really tend to love about this podcast is that it is a place where you can hear real business leaders discussing systems, methodologies, and strategies that they've actually used to help them catapult growth in their own businesses. So I'm your podcast host, Hakim Adebiyi, and I've grown several small businesses to multi-million pound enterprises, and I noticed that there wasn't really a place that focused on where I was, i.e. growing a small business. All of the content that seemed to be out there was about big business and often just lots of theory and no practical, implementable advice, which is exactly why I set up this podcast. And today is going to be one of my Business Bite sessions, which is, as you probably already know, me musing on a specific topic for business that has piqued my interest. So really excited to have you here. Happy listening. So today, what I want to talk to you about really is what I believe is one of the key drivers of business growth. And it's something that's often talked about, but I don't necessarily think that people delve into it as much as hopefully I'm going to do today. So that is uh, resilience and the power of resilience, because in the ever evolving world of business, I think that that's the quality that really stands out as a key determinant of success when you start to do research, is that resilience. So when I'm talking about resilience, what am I talking about? I'm thinking and talking about the intrinsic ability to bounce back from setbacks, uh, to adapt to change and keep going in the face of adversity. And I think this is uh, not just essential for individuals uh, as we grow and develop, but it's equally vital for businesses. So I wanted to spend today's episode delving briefly into the importance of resilience and its role in driving business growth. I'm going to explore whether, as is the prevailing view, resilience is a skill that seems to be reducing in every generation, uh, yeah, how important it is to actually have it. And then I want to go into some examples to illustrate that. And then lastly, I'm going to discuss how we can use the concept of mind over matter in terms of reframing and building resilience. So you know, as I said, I believe that, that resilience is the cornerstone of business success. And when I'm talking about resilience specifically, what I mean is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. You know, And in terms of business, this translates into the ability of a company to withstand shocks and disruptions and continue functioning or actually even thriving. Uh, that's the trick, really, to go from you know a difficult situation to thriving, not just coping. So it's therefore a critical skill to have because I don't know of any business or individual that goes through life without actually being knocked, of course, uh, at least from time to time. It'd be nice if that didn't happen, but it always does. So we need to work out a way to how, uh, in terms of how to deal with it. So history would bear out the businesses that possess the quality of resilience are often the ones that can stay the course and thrive in all conditions. So, for example, Apple Incorporated, everyone knows about that. After Steve Jobs was ousted from the company that he founded, you know, Apple struggled. And many people at that time predicted its downfall. However, you know, Apple had the scent. They brought him back. And on his return, Apple bounced back with the innovative products like the iPod, the iPhone, and the iPad. And this resilience i.e. they didn't just fall apart, they actually had a plan, they thought about the plan, they worked with it to move forward, and that resilience transformed Apple from, at that time, hard to believe in a moment, to from a failing company to one of the most successful tech giants today. Now, that tells me two things, really. Tell me, one, that Steve Jobs had the resilience uh, because he could have disappeared and decided he never wanted to go back because they often say ne never go back. And so he could have decided that and thought it's going to be too difficult, but actually he went back, worked in a place that he founded where he was ousted from. 
Uh, and it also tells me that Apple had the resilience and the ability to reframe the predicament they were in and turn it into success. And another example, which is a, a quite famous example, is Airbnb. And it may be that you don't know about this, but during the 2008 economic downturn, the founders of Airbnb sold themed cereal boxes. Yes, you heard it right. They sold themed cereal boxes to keep their business afloat. They didn't give up on their idea, despite the challenges that they had. And today, as I think most people know, Airbnb is a multi-billion dollar company. Now, the question I would ask is, how easy would it have been to throw your hands up in the air and fold like hundreds of businesses do every day, rather than to find a way to get through the downturn until you could start turning a real solid profit again? today. I really love stories like this. And I love exploring stories like that because it shows what can be achieved just by keeping going. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing clever. They just believed in what they were doing and they had the resilience and they kept going. Now, what I found is anytime you have any kind of discussion about resilience with anybody, uh, people always ask, do the younger generation still have that resilience? I'm not really sure how useful a question that is because number one, does it really matter if they inherently have that resilience, as long as you think that, that skill can be acquired. And number two, I think comparing resilience across generations can be really tricky because you've got different societal norms, you've got different economic conditions, you've got technological advancements that have occurred that, they, that didn't, weren't there in the past. The older generations, however, uh, have experienced significant global events such as world wars, economic depressions. And um, these things, these sort of big kind of cataclysmic events can potentially uh, lead to people having higher levels of resilience because they had to adapt to significant changes and overcome numerous challenges, which has therefore honed their resilience. However, I think that's like a sticky um, wicket, really, because the current generation uh, may not have had those and when we talk about the current generation, I'm talking about the ones that everyone calls them millennials or Generation Z. And for those of you who aren't keeping up, because there's lots of these uh, terminologies now, that's basically covering everyone born from 1981 to 2012. Now, these people are viewed as less resilient, and they're often criticized for being sheltered and having an easy life uh, due to all the technological advancements that have occurred, so everything's easy for them. But I think that what we have to also understand is that they face unique challenges that older generations didn't have to deal with. So they've got things such as climate change, yet, yeah, you know, and, and they don't have world wars, but there's still wars all over the place. There's lots of political instability. The whole political landscape has changed. And, you know, then a global pandemic that have now had to go through and deal with. So these challenges have the potential to foster resilience. So if they don't have resilience, I don't think it's due to a lack of challenges, which is what most people say, or, or a really easy life. Uh, and I think that the key is to understand um, that when you're talking about resilience, it's trying to understand that it isn't actually a fixed trait, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not saying that some people don't have more resilience than others inherently, but I think it's something that can be developed over time. And um, businesses need to foster a culture of resilience uh, encouraging learning from failures and viewing challenges as opportunities for growth. So let's assume for a minute that you all agree with me that, you know, building resilience is something that can be done, that yes, there may be an inherent element of it. So some people have more resilience than others, but it's something that you can develop and you can build over a period of time. If that's the case, then I think part of building that resilience is what we call reframing. And reframing is just simply a psychological technique that involves changing your perspective about a situation to manage stress and promote mental well-being. So in business, and I would say also in life generally, reframing can be used to cultivate resilience as it allows you to look at challenging situations differently and understand that, as they say, this too will pass. Uh, and hence, looking at all situations as transient opportunities for learning 
an improvement rather than looking at a one-off catastrophic event that you actually just could not get through. Therefore, if you're using this reframing technique, when faced with a setback, instead of viewing it as a failure, businesses can start to reframe them as learning opportunities. And that the simple shift in perspective can help companies bounce back much quicker. And as I said, even stronger, because the, the ideal is that the resilience helps you not just get through it and survive, but it helps you to thrive. So if you're doing this uh, reframing technique, which is just a mindset shift, it fosters, hopefully within your business, a culture of innovation, because employees are now no longer afraid to take risks and make mistakes, because they know that they're in a culture that actually sees these things as stepping stones to success. Now, as I always try to do in my podcast, I try to give you some actionable takeaways. So what I've done is just looked at for three key things that when you look across businesses and resilient people, what they tend to be able to do is, number one, they embrace change and uncertainty because change is a constant in life and in business. So you're going to have to find a way to accept it because it's going to happen. So embracing change really means understanding and accepting that things are not always going to go as planned. That's a fact. But you have to accept and let yourself know that that's okay when it doesn't go according to plan. Uh, And instead of resisting the change, accept it's going to happen and then view it as an opportunity for growth. Because this mindset shift on its own can help you adapt much more quickly when unexpected events occur. And then you can try and reframe them. And then you can go again and keep going like we saw in those examples. Number two, and I'm not saying any of these examples I'm giving you are easy, but they are things that we know work. So number two is cultivating a positive mindset. Now, a positive attitude goes a very long way in building resilience. And that doesn't mean, when I'm talking about positive mindset, it's not about ignoring the negative aspects of any situation or any given situation, but it's rather about focusing on the potential opportunities and lessons that you can learn from those situations. So there's lots of techniques that you can use, like mindfulness meditation, you know, and cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, and for a person like me, I'm a Muslim. So it's all about spirituality. I pray five times a day. That gives me what I need to keep keep that positive mental attitude. And these things can help cultivate a much more positive outlook. Also, making sure that you look after yourself. This is really important. And give yourself time to recharge Now, this can be through regular exercise, can be through making sure you get sufficient sleep, getting a healthy diet, or engaging in activities that you enjoy, or just doing all of those things. Because when your physical health is good, you are better able to maintain good mental health and deal with stress much more effectively. So number three is develop strong relationships and support networks. Resilience isn't about going through challenges alone. It's not about, yeah, you saying how brave you are because you've just got a challenge you've bottled it up you've worked on how to get through it now i'm not saying that doesn't have any benefit at all but in my experience and when you've studied what other people do to have resilience and actually from a business point of view it's about having a strong support network you know whether that's family it's friends it's professional mentors you know these things can significantly enhance your ability to bounce back from setbacks and actually then go on to thrive so don't hesitate to seek help when you need it And also, because it's a two-way street, offer support to others when they're going through tough times as well. So I think a real good way to look at it is to see resilience like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it becomes. And therefore, with practice and persistence, these steps, i.e. number one, embracing change and uncertainty. Number two, cultivating a positive mindset. And number three, developing strong relationships and support networks. These three steps can all help you build resilience over time. So to conclude, uh, you know, resilience is a crucial factor in driving business growth. It's not just about surviving challenging times. I hope that's what you'll take away from this. It's about how do you move from challenging times to actually thriving in those, not just surviving. And if we want to be able to do this and navigate the complexities of the business landscape, and we all know there are many, then fostering resilience and embracing the power of reframing is going to be key to building successful, sustainable businesses. And if you want to pick up the show notes, head over to the sales acceleration formula.com forward slash podcast hyphen show hyphen notes, and you'll be able to subscribe to our mailing list and get show notes for every single episode. And as always, 
Subscribe, like, and share with your friends, colleagues, and anyone else who you think may be interested. But most of all, keep the feedback coming so that we can continue to improve and give you more of what you like. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, and as I always do. Um, keep listening and keep growing.